In today's modern vernacular Arabic, the word hijab refers to a headscarf. Yet in classical Arabic and in the language of the Quran, hijab refers to a physical curtain, a screen, a partition, or a barrier that separates one from others when they stood behind a curtain. The one that is being covered by or that is found behind the hijab is not only covering their head and whole body, but also the space around them as they stand behind a curtain, a screen, a partition, or a barrier. According to the Holy Quran, this type of covering was an extra layer of coverage required to be worn only by Prophet Muhammad's wives. And when you ask his wives for something, ask them from behind a partition that is pure for your hearts and their hearts. Quran 33-53 Not only did the Prophet's wives have to cover their heads and body, but they were required to place a cover or a curtain in front of them to conceal their space when speaking to people other than their mahram, a person whom that individual is not permitted to marry because of their close blood relationship such as a brother, uncle, nephew, etc. Extra rules of etiquette pertaining to the manner in which one would speak to the wives of the Prophet were given by the Almighty, the All-Wise, dictating that there should stand a physical separation of the noble woman from the common folk, by way of a barrier that would be opaque, not see-through, and impenetrable. It provided an extra layer of privacy, and is simultaneously a symbol of their high status and dignity. It's important to express that the classic meaning of the term hijab in the Holy Quran is not the same as how we understand and use the term today. The wearing of the hijab was not required by anyone other than the Prophet's wives, as is outlined in the Holy Quran. As for all other women, the Quran explicitly instructs that women should wear a headscarf in a different verse and tell the believing women to reduce some of their vision and guard their private parts and not expose their adornments except that which is necessarily appears therefore and to wrap a portion of it their head covers over their chests and not expose their adornment except to their husbands to the end of the verse the holy quran uses the word khimar to refer to a headscarf that which covers your head the word khimar comes from a root word which means to cover something the word khimar is similar to the Arabic word khamr, which is the word for alcohol, as alcohol impairs one's intellect. One cannot think straight while under the influence of alcohol, as it creates a barrier between the mind and the power of speech and reasoning. God states in his book, Tell the believing women to wear their khumr, the plural of khimar, over their bosom as in to throw their shawl over and cover their chest area. So in addition to covering one's chest, the head should be covered too, as the covering of the head is already implied by the use of the word khumr in this verse. So the basic essentials of the khimar dictate that the hair be covered and that a cloth cover the chest of the woman. Whereas generally speaking, the women of the days of the Prophet would wear headscarves. Some of them would expose their chest area by pushing their headscarf back. So they were commanded by God to cover their chest area in addition. In addition to covering the head, neck, and chest area, God instructs the believing Muslim women to throw onto themselves a jilbab, which references a loose outer garment, which does not define their body shape and conceal her beauty. This is in reference to a situation in which a Muslima leaves her home or is in the presence of those who are not her mahram. O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers to bring down over themselves part of their outer garment that is more suitable and they will be known and not be abused and ever is Allah forgiving and merciful. Quran 33:59. Because these verses in the Holy Quran are very explicit and direct, no disagreements or disputes have been posed to this direct edict by representatives of the Islamic scholarship in the past, except when it concerns the issue of whether women should also cover their face and feet. The primary reason as to why a Muslim woman wears the hijab can be attributed to a Muslim's belief that her true purpose in life is to worship God the Almighty according to his instructions as revealed in God's final revelation to mankind, the Holy Quran, and through the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, the final messenger of God. God made the wearing of the hijab an obligation and instructed the believing woman to wear the head covering in the Holy Quran. So wearing it is an act of righteousness and an act of obedience to God. A Muslim woman wears the hijab to seek and gain the pleasure of her master. It is the core teaching of Islam that whatever God instructs one to do, it is always best for them to follow the instructions, whether one may understand the logic behind it or not. A Muslim woman trusts God and does whatever he instructs her to do, trusting that it will be best for her. 
as God knows what's best for her more than she knows herself. God is the creator of everything and is all-knowing, all-wise. Only when she submits to God and obeys His commands does she start to reap the benefits and feel tranquility and contentment of life, as she knows that God is pleased with her. By focusing on and submitting to the demands of God, she is set free and is no longer a slave and a prisoner of society's pressures and desires. Whoever does righteousness, whether male or female, while he is a believer, we will surely cause him to live a good life, and we will surely give them their reward in the hereafter, according to the best of what they used to do. Quran 1697 Islam stresses the relationship between the body and the mind. In covering her body, a Muslim woman shields her heart from spiritual impurities. A Muslim woman wears the hijab to uphold Islam's code of modesty. Islam's code of modesty extends to all aspects in one's life, including their dress and the way they carry themselves. A Muslim's dress is an outer manifestation of inner purity, beauty, and humility, as wearing the hijab embodies moral conduct, character, manners, and speech. A Muslim woman guards her modesty and does not attract unnecessary attention from people, such as a double look, admiration, praise, or sexual attraction from those other than her husband. Whereas attention from others may boost one ego for a short period of time, a Muslim woman acknowledges that this type of attention can potentially lead to consequences in the long term, such as jealousy from others, envy, competition, affairs, being a bad role model for children, and possibly a marriage breakup, as we see all so often in the West and around the world where dressing immodestly is common. A Muslim woman boasts a trait of haya, modesty, bashfulness, and a sense of shame within her and values her beauty, so she veils herself as the hijab diverts attention away from her and conceals and protects the Muslimah. God also instructs women to lower their gaze when the opposite gender is present, which shows the trait of haya, and tell the believing women to reduce some of their vision and guard their private parts. Quran 2431 a Muslim is honored in Islam and in the Sharia, Islamic law. Islam elevates the one that covers herself, safeguarding her personal integrity by not allowing herself to be treated as a sexual object, to be valued and judged externally based solely on her appearance, rather than internally on her righteousness, character, mind, and intellect. A Muslim a woman does not desire to adorn her body for men, sexualizing herself to gain attention from those other than her husband that is more suitable, that they will be known and not be abused, and ever is Allah forgiving and merciful. Quran 33, 59. According to this verse, a Muslimah should wear a hijab and dress modestly so she can be recognized as a Muslimah, a woman that is chaste and serious about her modesty. A Muslimah sets a standard for herself and sends a message for everyone around her that she is not one to sell herself cheap and knows her value, and that she is a strong woman with courage inner strength, fortitude, and a practicing Muslimah that would not harm, oppress, or cheat anyone. The hijab is a shield that helps to prevent a Muslimah from being a victim of molestation, taunting, humiliation, or teasing. Not only does she wear modest garb to protect herself, but she wears it to protect men and society at large. Contrary to popular belief, many assume that the hijab is worn solely to restrain men's illicit desires. It is not the woman's responsibility to regulate a man's behavior. Every man is responsible and accountable for their own conduct and action. In fact, the Holy Quran also instructs men to be modest, lower their gaze and guard their modesty, and to handle themselves sensibly in every sphere of their lives. God states, Tell the believing men to reduce some of their vision and guard their private parts. That is pure for them. Indeed, Allah is acquainted with what they do. Quran 2440 the Holy Qur'an actually instructs men to observe modesty first, before women do. While many often incorporate the concept of hijab with wearing a headscarf, that is only one application of the concept. The hijab is much more than a head covering, but the overall concept of being modest and humble in other aspects of life as well. A similar instruction is given in the Bible. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Gospel of Matthew 5, 27-28 In the Holy Qur'an, 
the Almighty specifically addresses women when he asks them not to show off their adornments, except that is proper and easily apparent, and to draw their veils over their bodies due to the physical and biological distinctions that exist between males and females, and their modes of attraction to one another. This is evident in today's world, where the disgraceful exposure of a sex appeal is catered overwhelmingly to men as opposed to women. By corporations and industries mindful of the manner in which their advertising and selling of products influence their purchasing behavior. Some feminist movements and media outlets portray the hijab as a depiction of oppression and slavery of women. While sadly it is true that some Muslim women are oppressed even though it goes against the teachings of Islam. The overall oppression of women happens in many different parts of the world regardless of the oppressor's religion or culture, even if they are atheists in faith. While one can say a particular government or group of people generally oppresses women, it is not truthful to say that Islam in general oppresses women. No Islamic laws oppress women who have every right to a decent life without facing aggression or abuse in any sort. If women were indeed granted their God-given rights, oppression would not exist in the manner that it does today. Unfortunately, Islam is not being practiced as it should be, even in Muslim land. Islam honors women, yet sadly across the globe, Muslim women fall victims to cultural aberrations that have no place in the faith. A Muslim woman who covers her hair or places her religion above worldly pursuits is sometimes labeled oppressed, but in reality, oppression is not defined by a piece of material over one's head, but rather by the weakening of the heart and mind. Liberation means freedom, but not freedom to do as one pleases. Freedom must never come at the expense of oneself or others. When a Muslim woman fulfills the role for which she was created to find God, build a relationship with him, and follow his guidance and commands. Not only is she liberated, but she is empowered and honored. She is liberated and free from the shackles of society, the pressures, and the unrealistic stereotypes and images dictated by the media. A Muslim woman who choose to cover their hair and dress modestly view the act as a right and not a burden. The concept of hijab is not a concept that is unique to Islam. The three Abrahamic religions share many beliefs, including the idea of covering one hair in public with a veil. It was the custom of Jewish women and Catholic nuns to go out in public with their heads covered. As recently as 40 to 50 years ago, it was unheard of of a Christian woman to go to church without covering her head, nor wearing a long skirt. In fact, the concept of a female head covering is found in the Bible, stating a woman must cover her head and if she shows her head uncovered, she dishonors her head and should have her head shaved off. Unlike related passages found in the Quran, Paul in this verse presented the veil as a sign of a man's authority. A woman wearing a headscarf, in his view, should be doing so to show her subordination to a man. This sexist view of women covering their heads reflects the influence of certain individuals in the West who think that hijab is oppressive and a symbol of inferiority and degradation. This is because they subconsciously are reacting to the Judeo-Christian concept of the veil, which is the symbol of a woman's subjection to her husband. This is not the case in Islam. The concept of hijab comes with obligatory conditions which should be followed by Muslim women. The conditions are that the whole body, except for the face and hands, should be covered, and by clothing that is loose, not tight, not transparent, in all covering. The dress should not attract attention or accentuate the body, should not be perfumed, and should not resemble clothing worn by men or unbelievers, nor should it be overly elegant or ornate. God has given an exception to this rule to those who are no longer capable of bearing children, who no longer desire marriage or sexual relations, and who cannot excite the passions of men. These ladies do not need to cover themselves to the same degree as other women do. They are allowed to remove their outer garment, known as Jilbab in Arabic. The Prophet of God, peace be upon him, praised modest women who guard their chastity and the beauty bestowed upon them by God. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also cursed those women that display and flaunt their beauty in public, stating that those women will not smell the fragrance of paradise. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, has warned us towards the end of time, women will exist who are dressed yet naked and turning away from righteousness will be inclined to do evil, leading others astray, including their husbands. To my dear believing sister, let not the whispers of Satan mislead and misguide you, and let not Satan drag you from your Creator, the All-Merciful, the All-Loving, 
you need to recognize that you are not in a position to negotiate your faith as to what you should accept and what you should decry. You will need to submit fully and willingly and realize, my dear sister, that you are blessed and honored to be amongst the people of La ilaha illallah. Do not procrastinate as your death can occur at any moment, bringing with it an end to the test of your faith. The act of not wearing a hijab or not dressing modestly is a sin, but to justify your actions is much worse. When you are honest with yourself and are willing to admit your transgressions, you gain the chance for repentance, change, and forgiveness. Feeling guilty of a sin is the first step of repentance. Like any other act of worship, the act of dressing modestly and wearing hijab will require faith, sacrifice, discipline, and patience. Dressing modestly strengthens the relationship between you and your Lord. To my dear sister who is struggling through her journey of hijab, strengthen your prayer rituals in connection with God and His book. By supplicating to Him, you allow Him to help you. Pray and strengthen your connection with God as these acts will help keep you away from sins and unlawful acts, giving you the power you need to resist evil elements. Take the first step now and never give up on your quest for faith. Wear the hijab for the sake of God alone and ignore the outside noise. Ignore people's stares and comments and realize that this journey is worth the struggle. Realize that pleasing people is a goal you can never achieve and that pleasing your creator is the road to contentment and peace. Our Prophet peace be upon him said, Whoever seeks Allah's pleasure by incurring the wrath of the people, Allah will suffice and protect him from the people. And whoever seeks the people's pleasure by Allah's wrath, Allah will entrust him to the people. Surround yourself with righteous, practicing sisters, realizing that you are too precious to be on display for each man to see. And realize, my dear sister, that you and your believing sisters are the last true representatives of femininity on this earth. Our Prophet narrated, whoever guides another to a good deed will get a reward similar to the one who performs it. So please like, subscribe, and share this video. Assalamu alaikum.